Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to make something super impressive out of something super simple. A paper flower. Aren't these dahlias just stunning? They are popping up everywhere. I've seen them used as backdrops for a photo shoot, birthday party decor, centerpieces, and wall decor for practically every room in the house. They make a huge splash on a small budget. All you need is a little paper and glue and you're in business. They may look hard to make, but they really, really aren't, I promise you. I will walk you through all of the steps so you are sure to end up with dahlias just as dazzling as these. So let's head on over to my craft table and we'll make some of these beautiful blooms together. So I have made a lot of paper flowers in my life, but I'm still amazed at how beautiful they turn out and how some are so lifelike. I love that they're always in season and no matter how hard you try, you can't kill them. Maybe just crinkle them a little bit. I also love that all you need to make them is paper and glue. Now I start all of my paper crafts with good quality cardstock. I use 65 pound cardstock for my dahlias. I think that this paper weight is best for making paper flowers. You can use 80 pound cardstock, yes, but it wouldn't go any heavier. I find it becomes too difficult to shape the petals with heavier cardstock. Now there are a lot of choices when it comes to glue. For this project, I did a little experimenting with the glue because I always wanna set you up for success. So I tested my favorite uh, art glue, which is Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, and my hot glue gun. And I'm gonna share my findings with you when it's time to assemble our dahlia so that you can use the one that works the best. And something else really cool about my free dahlia designs, they were created so you can make them on a variety of projects even on a Cricut Joy, really. So I cut my cardstock with the Cricut Maker 3 and a fine point blade, but you can also use an original maker or a machine from the Explorer series, along with a blue light grip machine mat or a green standard grip machine mat. We'll also use a brayer and something to shape the petals. Last but not least, we will use a Cricut pen, along with something that resembles a dartboard to make sure our dahlia is on point. So let me show you where to get my free design and then we'll get started. Step one, get my free paper dahlia designs. First, go to jennifermaker.com slash 387 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the design by searching the page for design number 387 and then click it to download a zip file with an SVG file for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. I'm going to show you how to cut the designs on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how to unzip and upload SVG files. I have included two different files for two different types of dahlias, one with cone-shaped petals and one with broad-shaped petals. I've also included files to make both versions on the Cricut Joy. Here's what my cone-shaped paper dahlia designs look like in Cricut Design Space. You may need to zoom out to see the full design. To do this, click on the minus sign in the lower left corner of the screen. The cone-shaped dahlia is the easiest to cut because it only uses one petal size and shape. However, it takes longer to cut since it uses many individual petals and the cone takes longer to assemble, but the end result is worth it. The second dahlia has broad shaped petals. This design has different sizes and petals, but does not require as many individual petals for the final project, so it cuts more quickly. The final sizes can be easily changed to suit your needs. If you want a small, quick version of this design, you can cut out the middle piece of the flower and I'll explain how a little later. 
Step two, prepare your paper dahlia design for cutting. I recommend that you prepare and cut one of these flowers at a time. We will start with the broad petal dahlia. There are two ways to make this design. One way makes an eight inch flower. The other way makes an 18 and a half inch flower. To make the eight inch flower, first click ungroup at the top of the layers panel. Next, drag a bounding box over the layers that resemble a flower and pull that off to the right. Then drag another bounding box over the remaining elements, group them together, and click the eye icon next to the group to hide them. Now you can click make it to cut this version, but we'll circle back to that a little later. For now, let's unhide and ungroup the base piece and petals. See the grid on the top of the base piece that looks like a dartboard or a spider web? Right now, our machine recognizes those as cut lines, but we want to change that. We want those lines drawn in pen. So select that layer in the Layers panel, and then under Operation at the top, click Basic Cut, and then select Pen from the drop-down menu. Next, select both the guidelines and the circle by holding Shift and selecting both layers. Then click Attach at the bottom of the Layers panel. And that's it for prepping the Broad Petal Dahlia in Design Space. Now let me show you how to prepare the cone-shaped dahlia for cutting. Start with the base piece and grid lines just as we did for the broad shape design and change the cut lines to pen and attach the layers. And it's that simple, this design is now ready to cut. If you want, you can resize any of these designs. To do this, click on Select All in the top menu and then simply drag the resize handle in the lower right corner of the bounding box until you get the size you want. You can also enter exact dimensions under size in the top menu. Make sure to keep the lot closed to maintain the aspect ratio. If you need any help resizing your SVG in Cricut Design Space, check out my resizing guide at jennifermaker.com slash resize SVG. In it, I explain exactly what you need to do to resize any design to fit your needs. Step three, cut your paper dahlia design. Now we're ready to cut. We will cut the broad shape petal dahlia, but you follow the same basic steps for all of the dahlias. Make sure you have the right machine selected in the top menu and then click make it. If prompted, click on mat and then continue. On the prepare screen, make sure the size of the materials is correct for each color. Right now you will see there are 12 mats to cut. If you'd like to conserve material, you can move elements onto fewer mats. I explain exactly how to do that in the blog post that goes along with this video at jennifermaker.com slash paper dahlia. Now let's choose material and tool options on the make screen. They're the same for whichever dahlia you make. I selected light cardstock with more pressure for a better cut. Place your cardstock on your machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered. Then load your mat into your machine and press the flashing button to begin the cut. When the cut is finished, unload the mat, flip it over and roll it back to release the cardstock. For the base layer, make sure your fine point pen is in clamp A and check that your fine point blade is clean and in clamp B. The pen color doesn't matter as it won't be visible once the dahlia is assembled. If you're making just the eight inch dahlia, you won't even need the pen at all. When you're ready, load the mat into the machine and press the flashing button to begin. Now cut out all of your petals using the color indicated on the screen. As you take the pieces off of the mats, stack duplicate elements together to keep everything straight. It's okay to leave the pen in the machine the whole time, just make sure to remove it, recap it, and store it tip down when you are done. Storing pens tip down means the ink is always near the tip and ready to go when you're ready to use them. Step 4. Assemble your paper dahlias. The assembly instructions for the two styles of dahlia are very different. 
Let's start with a dahlia with the cone-shaped petals. That one takes a little longer to assemble, but the result is really beautiful. We'll need all of the pieces and some good glue. Like I mentioned earlier, I tested regular glue and hot glue to see what works best. And hands down, it was the Barely Art Craft Glue. Not only is it easier to work with, you don't have to heat it up or worry about burning yourself. But before we get to the glue, let's shape all the petal pieces into cones. The petal shape is a rhombus, so it's not quite a square. Two sides are longer than the others. So turn the petal shapes so that it's like a diamond with the longest sides on top, like this. Curl the lower sides of the rhombus in toward each other using the bone folder tool. If you don't have one, you can simply curl the edges around your finger or use the straight edge of a ruler. The side corners should overlap a bit. Unfold the sides enough to put two dots of glue, one on the right corner facing you and another on the back of the left corner. Make sure the glue is close to the edges, but not so close that the glue will squeeze out when you press the corners into each other. Pinch the glued spots together, closing your cone. Once all the cones are assembled, it's time to add them to the base. This grid on the base is a real game changer. It helps keep the cones even all the way around the base circle. Now before adding any glue, let's lay out the first layer of cones to get an idea of the final size. Depending on your petal placement and size, you can make anywhere between a 10 inch flower and a 15 inch flower. Start by choosing one of the guideline circles. I started two circles in from the edge for my largest dahlia. Place cones on all the straight lines first, making sure the tip of each cone is aligned to the edge of the same circle. Now place cones in between each of the cones already on the base, making sure the tips of the additional eight cones are aligned to the same guide circle. You should use 16 cones for the first layer. You can change the size of the dahlia by moving the beginning layer of cones to different circles on the guidelines. If you want your flower to be smaller, move the points to a smaller circle, and if you want it to be bigger, move the points to a larger circle. Check to make sure that your overall size is what you expect, and then adjust as needed. Begin gluing petals to the base by flattening the area of the cone that attaches to the base. Add glue to the back of the flattened area and press it onto the base. Make sure to line up the point of the cone to the correct guide circle. Once you have glued all 16 of the cones to form your base layer, lay the next layer on top in between each of the already glued cones. The tips of the second layer of cones should be lined up with the next smaller guide circle. When you have arranged the second layer, check again to make sure your cones are where you want them before flattening and gluing them in place. Now continue gluing layers in this manner. You will use fewer cones for each layer as you work toward the center. When gluing the center cone pieces, you will need a long tool to press the cone tips down into the center. The bone folding tool works quite well for this, but you can also use a small dowel or an unsharpened pencil. And your cone dahlia is now complete. Isn't it beautiful? Now let's assemble the broad petal dahlia. Creating this 8 inch dahlia is also the first step for making the larger design. So first we'll shape the petals on each layer by carefully folding the petal sides together to form a crease along the center. And unfold the petal. Now the upper part is cupped. Before gluing the layers together, bend each petal up slightly from the central piece. For the smallest inner layer, bend the pieces in all the way and then pull them back out slightly to create the illusion of petals just opening. Add glue to the bottom of the second largest layer's base and place it on top of the largest layer. Rotate the layer so that the petals of the second layer nestle in between the petals of the first layer like this and continue applying glue to the next smallest layer, rotating the petals and placing it on the center of the previous layer. 
and do this for all of the layers. And that's all there is to assembling the 8-inch dahlia. It's pretty by itself as it is, but it will also look great as the centerpiece of the jumbo dahlia. So set this piece aside for now. All right, so here are the pieces for the jumbo broad petal dahlia. Start by folding the petals just like we did earlier for the smaller flower. And here's a tip. The bone folder really helps. Place it right in the middle of a petal and over the tip. And then fold the petal around it. Stop your crease when the petal sides curve out. Slide it out and then press the fold tightly together to form the crease. Now unfold it and the rest of the shape is what I'll call its tab. We leave that flat. Now crease all the petals before starting the assembly, including the small pieces. Now let's assemble the first petal layer along the third drawn circle from the outside. Place eight large petals around the circle, aligning their creases with a long line and the flat tab edge with a pen line. Add a bit of glue to the back of each petal's tab and press them in place. The top edge of the largest petal's tab should match the outer edge of the base circle, just like this. Slightly fold each petal up where the petal shape meets the tab. Next, glue another eight petals onto the circle base in between each petal, already glued to the circle. Their edges should line up with the edges of the petals already on the base. The tab edges will overlap a bit, and then continue placing the second and third layers of the petals in the same manner, moving each layer in so the bottom of the petal tab lines up with the next smaller ring. As you glue each layer, make sure to fold the petals up slightly at the tab before moving on to the next layer. Now add the centerpiece. Apply glue to the back of the 8-inch dahlia that we made earlier and place it on top of the larger flower's center base. Rotate the small dahlia so the petals fit together in a pleasing manner and press firmly to make sure it stays put. Isn't this glorious? Didn't these dahlias turn out so beautiful? Imagine using them as a decoration at your next party or event, on a wall, or as a centerpiece, or as a gorgeous photo backdrop. Now, if you have any questions about these beautiful paper dahlias or crafting techniques that I covered in this video, or anything else craft related that I might be able to help you with, please let me know. You can leave your question right below this video or ask us over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to help and I would love to see your paper flowers. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.